this video I'll be demonstrating how you can create and use a brush for 3D Coat. I'll also be showing you how to create and use a 3D object as a brush inside of 3D Coat. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. Okay, let's select one of these brushes up here and uh, I like the speckled one in particular. So let's right click on it and edit an external editor. We're going to examine the actual brush itself and here's one we'll be using just a little later. Okay, so you can see here we have four layers inside of the inside of the layers tab for this particular image. Let's examine them one at a time, starting with the bottom. Okay, the bottom layer is the erase mask. If you actually put any kind of white color in here, it won't uh, erase from those areas. Uh, then we next have the specular map. Same thing. If you decide to put black in there, it won't paint specularity. Next up is the height map, and you'll notice that this layer is gray. It's uh, 127, 127, 127 on, uh, on RGB. And in 3D code, that grayscale is actually zero. So if we were to have a white, as you can see here in the image, a white will actually cause an extrusion when you sculpt on your object, or paint for that matter. If you have black, it will cause an indentation. So keep that in mind when you're creating your brushes. Next up we have color, and I'll hide the height map and spec channels, and you can see that's white. So if you actually have color in here, it will hue or tint your currently selected color back over here in, in 3D Coat. Whatever color this is will be tinted by the color you have selected inside the brush. If it's a grayscale, you know, anywhere between black and white, it will be the same color, just various shades. So you, you can actually have various shades of gray in here to change the color that you have in 3D Coat. Okay, let's go back to Photoshop here. Now, something very important to note here, you must, if you're going to be using a PSD for your your brush, you have to have these four layers, each with their respective names. So you must have color, height map, specular, and erase mask. Otherwise, it will not load. That said, you can also drag and drop just about any JPEG, PNG, Targa, you name it, right in from your browser or your, your file explorer inside of whatever OS you happen to be using, right onto 3D Coat, and uh, it will ask you if you'd like to create a brush, mask, material, and so on. So let's, uh, let's stop this chitter, chitter chatter here and jump right on over to some semi-creation and usage here. So I've already got my color color here. This will be my probably color and height in my height map. And I've already filled in the background so I can see what's going on. So let's just go ahead and rename this to Erase Mask. Okay, let's create another layer that's going to be Specular. And one more layer, we'll call that Height Map. Okay, let's control S to save. All right, now I actually have a, a layer mask on this, so you can see it's it's uh, tapered here. Let's disable it real quick. You can see I've got it going nearly to the edge, so I just used a circular gradient yeah, up here. You can see the circular gradient, and applied that you know from the center out, and then inverted it so I could get an effect that looks like that. I, I'm not sure if you can actually keep that uh, layer mask, so let's go ahead and just right click on the layer mask and uh, apply it. Okie dokie. And let's hit save again. Now if we go to our file browser, as I mentioned before, we can drag and drop that right over to 3D Coat. And it looks like it's actually causing me some problems here. <laughs> go figure. <laughs> let's try that one more time no joy so what we can do there there's multiple ways to import new brushes you can go up here into the pin tab click on the arrow on the top right hand corner and let's add a new pin uh, let's see where are you oh yeah there it is sorry you actually don't go to that arrow uh, my mistake that's how you add uh, multiple pins, sorry. You can actually go there, I suppose. Uh, just add existing folder. That'll work. But let's just go ahead and click on that folder icon right up there. And let's browse to our newly created brush here. Okay, there it is. 
and you can see it's loaded up there inside of 3D Cope. So let's select some nice contrasty color. Let's go with a dark color here and um, scale it up. Mm. It looks like yeah, you can you can kind of see it there. Let's use the stamp tool here and just click and drag out. Right, so there you go. And you can actually see some of the smaller details in there now. Right, so uh, that's how you create and use a brush inside of 3D Coat. And normally, you can drag and drop from the file browser, but at the moment, it seems to be causing me some problems. Probably didn't start 3D Coat with admin rights, but pay attention to that too. If you don't have admin rights, sometimes it will cause issue. Okay, let's continue on here. And let's create now a 3D mesh. Going to create something rather simple here. So let's see, what do we have? Oops, wrong tab. Let's go ahead and start with the disk. Yes, yes, yes. Okie dokie, oops. Hit control to size that uh, symmetrically here, not symmetrically, but uniform rather. Okay, and we'll just keep 24 segments and we'll center this zero on the X and Z axes. Okay, and we'll just call that good. Let's select that polygon. Now this isn't a modeling tutorial, mind you. I'm just creating a uh, an object here. Okay, and what we're gonna do is actually bevel bevel this, pull it up slightly, just to taper that. Okay, and then we'll go down, and then another extrusion or bevel, and then back up. And we're going to try and get as close as possible to that surface right there. So that's good enough for me. Let's go ahead and hit S to save, and ch -ch -ch, wrong folder, whoops. Let's browse to this here, and we'll just go ahead and save this in here. Let's just call this, uh, ch -ch -ch, what do we call it? Uh, we'll just call it disk brush. Okay, and we've saved that. Let's try and drag and drop again. Okay, all right, we got our disk brush. Let's drag and drop that into, yeah, there we go. That's working for the 3D object. So it'll give you a number of options if it's a 3D object. You can see it says merge in new scene, merge, 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 and so on. What we want to do is create a new pin. So now you'll get this weird little pop-up window here, which allows us to rotate uh, with the left mouse button. Um, in the viewport. Right mouse button will zoom so you can scale up the size of the brush and we can also change some of the options down here but let's let's talk about this a little more. Whoopsie, didn't mean to do that. Okay, so we're gonna scale it, uh, I'm sorry, uh, let's try and line it up and we can actually use these as well. So, uh, hmm, let's go ahead and I think it's on the Let's look down on it. Yeah, right. So if you click these buttons here, if you click X, it will look down on positive X. Uh, if you click negative X, it will look down on negative. And uh, same with the um, the Y and Z axes as well. So we want to look down. Um, there we go. Look down on on negative Y there. And let's change the, the size of it to 512 by 512. You can go to uh, 128 by 128 and also 256 by 256. If you like, you can also change the aspect ratio. I will be keeping this at uh, 1 to 1. And let's change the depth. You got a little slider in here, right, right here where it says depth, but you can also key in a value. Uh, we're just going to slide the value of 0 here so we can get something like that. So I want a brush that looks like this. We got two concentric rings and that looks just fine to me. You can also rotate clockwise and counterclockwise. I will not be doing that because this is a disk and that will really have no bearing on it whatsoever. So let's go ahead and hit create now and you can see now we have our our brush up here. So now if we yeah you know, we brush in here you can see we got these these rings, but let's go ahead and use the stamp tool again and just click and drag out and uh, voila, 
we have our concentric ring brush. <laughs> Maybe not the coolest brush in the world, but uh, you know, you can use just about any kind of mesh.